Hi everybody, welcome to my podcast, Becoming Your Own VIP, Mind, Body, and Soul. Today I wanted to cover another healing tool, which um, is meditation that I use on a daily basis. And um, meditation is a mind and body practice that has a long history through the Eastern culture, culture and is referenced in the Bible. Now, the two between the Eastern culture and the Bible are two different types of meditation. Eastern culture culture is where you're actually sitting in a pose and actually in silence and meditating. Um, and the Bible, meditation is a reflection upon words, a reflection upon your thoughts, reflection upon whatever your inner thoughts are. And meditation to me is the same thing, but eventually you kind of quiet your mind completely and you kind of zone out into just quiet stillness in the bible meditation um i would still say it's a a stillness as well but again it's more reflection upon the words so that again those who can see can see those that can hear can hear it's also a visualization type of method um, between both of them but meditation is used for increasing calmness and physical um, relaxation, improving psychological balance, coping with illness, and enhancing overall health and well-being. Mind-body practices focuses on the interactions among the brain, mind, body, and behavior. Now, when I also mention mind-body practices, I also want to bring up yoga as that practice as well. Um, for me, both of them take you to a place that we normally don't go yoga is asking of you to go beyond what your mind thinks your body is capable of doing and I can tell you right now if you asked me five years ago would I be doing yoga the answer would have been no and um, I will tell you that truly in union of your mind and body especially your energy systems both meditation and yoga meet those areas to bring balance into your life um now looking this up in um google i know i wanted to to give you a scientific uh viewpoint here that that basically will help support those who are not on the spiritual path but when it comes to meditation through science it shows that studies actually reflect many positive benefits from meditation for for different conditions and there is evidence that it may reduce blood pressure as well as symptoms of irritable bowel systems aiding absorption of nutrition and flare-ups in people who have had um, any type of um, ulcerative colitis it may ease symptoms of anxiety depression insomnia reflexes to um, and it relaxes the nervous system it releases doubt and quiets your mind releases your fears, lowers bipolar, PTSD, and ADH symptoms. Now, for me personally, I can attest to this helping with depression, releasing fears, and calming down any type of anxiety and ADHD um, and PTSD symptoms. Now, I'm not been diagnosed with ADHD, but I have anxiety. And all all of that has to do with racing of your mind, feeling like there's so much that you have to do. And um, meditation, because our mind is so stimulated through conversations, through our work, through media, we are so overwhelmed mentally with our day-to-day and the things that we consume visually, audibly, we are, we are constantly in a barrage of sensory overload. And that's a lot of the reasons why we're constantly activated. And we also feel like we got to go, 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 go. And we always feel frazzled or overwhelmed or we don't have enough time when really we do have enough time. And we do have these moments of sanity um, and peace and quiet if we just go still. So meditation, whether it's the biblical aspect or the Eastern uh, methods of, of just being still is medicine for your mind in a natural, most calming state that your body actually craves. And I can tell you right now that I saw effects immediately 
once I started meditation and eventually it wasn't immediately. Um, and to be truthfully honest, I didn't document it on the calendar because I had no idea that meditation at the time would benefit me as much as it did. For me, I was looking at meditation for emotional stability. You know, um, I was in a place where my world was rocked and um, my I just had no other methods I really didn't want to get on medication. I was trying to find things holistic and meditation was that answer. So meditation brings you into a centered mind. It centers your breathing and breathing is very healing in itself as well. Just by breathing, you can tell if someone is in an anxious state or a calm state, an angered state or a happy state. The deeper you breathe, the slower you breathe, You allow oxygen throughout your entire body as well as your mind. And you're able to bring healing energies in to your body just by breathing. And um, actually, as a matter of fact, I will mention there is an app that I will forgot to look up before I got on here. But I think it's called Breathwork. I'm not for sure. But you know what? My next podcast, I'll, I'll look at it or I'll put it on the comments to um, this podcast and refer you to this breathwork app and by no means um, are they paying me um, and no means am I asked to advertise this this is something I truly use and has benefited me Um, you have a certain state to breathe before you go to sleep certain way to breathe when waking up if you're having anxiety or a panic attack this app will actually help you show you as well as tell you how long to hold your breath you know breathe in for a certain amount of numbers hold your breath for a certain amount of numbers exhale your breath for a certain amount of numbers and it's a very calming voice Um, again it gives you visual and audible instructions and you learn to train your breathing that way there's also a breathing whistle things that nature that you can buy but that costs a lot Um, so we have not been taught to breathe correctly. And if you remember in, in our elementary school days in music class, how the teacher holds our stomach says, breathe through your diaphragm. (laughs) Well, that holds truth. We are not breathing properly. And so therefore we're not allowing our body to, um, receive the air and the healing we need. And then same with um, our, our minds. We are so busy. And again, sensory overload. Back in the day, you know, there wasn't a lot of sensory overload, but there was still talk. There was still gossip. There were still rumors. Um, and you still needed to find time to get away. You know, Jesus went up on the mountaintop <laughs> to get away from everyone so that he could have his moment of quiet reflection. You get away from other people's energies. If you're in a room with a whole bunch of angry people or anxious based people, you're picking up that energy and you're anxious just by being there. Like, oh my gosh, can you breathe? (laughs) Is what you want to say to people at times. And people actually do say that to people, just calm down. There's a reason for that. You're getting me worked up and I'm not even feeling the way you're feeling, but just by your behavior, the way you're acting, your energy I'm picking up on and you need to calm down just a little bit. So we, again, are energetic beings and to be able to get away and get away from other people, as well as the sensory things that we utilize on a day-to-day basis, it overwhelms our mind. And then with our own history, that all of those things are what is running through our mind on constant repeat and it won't ever quiet. It just doesn't quiet. Again, a lot of people find ways to drown out that noise through numbing themselves out on Netflix, binge watching TV, eating, drinking, drugs, uh, shopping, sex. You know, a lot of it is uh, we uh, drown it out in some way, shape or form in an unhealthy way versus the healthy way, which is to allow it to leave. Allow your mind to, to, to get this stuff out. And another way you can allow it to get out is by writing out your thoughts. 
So I've never been a one to journal. I'm just going to give you guys a couple of side notes because I'm not going to make a podcast about some of these things and I'll get back to meditation. But it's important to get what's on your mind out. And I've, like I said, I've never been one to journal and I still don't journal as much. But when your mind, if you keep it in your mind and while you're trying to find solution, it plays on repeat over and over and over again until you find a solution. But who's to say that's the best solution? So um, what I've been studying lately is one, write it down. Write down whatever your thoughts are. Just let it all pour out, right? Now, with whatever it is, if it's an opportunity to take, a conversation you have to have with someone, whatever it is that you are currently trying to find a solution for, you want to write down everything you're thinking about right now. What do you think your solutions is? And then the next question is, okay, now what if I'm wrong? With everything I just wrote down through my own perspective, through my own life experiences, what if I'm wrong? So now it asks you to open your mind even broader, see a higher perspective and give yourself a different answer. It's kind of like a pros and cons list, but instead of a pro and con, it's asking, okay, now this is what you're thinking, which normally we think in alignment of we're right, they're wrong. Well, now by you saying, well, what if you're wrong? Now you put down the other perspective, okay? And this allows you to not be so tight in your box, open your mind and see what other solutions you could come up with. So that's just one thing um, I want to talk about um, when it comes to journaling and clearing your mind. Um, You know, it helps lessen fears or anxieties you're having about things. And again, breathing. But then um, the biggest thing for me, again, was meditation. Now, I chose to do the Eastern style of sitting in a pose and, um, you know, just quieting my mind for however long it took. Now, at the beginning, your mind is going to run. It's going to run. That's why we, we hid it. That's why we ran from it. We didn't want to hear it. Because it said a whole bunch of nonsense. Um, Well, we thought it was nonsense. It brought up a lot of fear from things we didn't want to face. Past regrets. Past hurts. Past pains. um, Fears that may not even make sense to us. And um, it just a whole bunch of stuff rattling off. What do I need to wear tomorrow? Or, ooh, what do I need to cook? Or your to-do list of anything that you have to do other than sitting still because your mind doesn't want to sit still. You've never quieted it before. So your mind's like, what are you doing? And it's taking this opportunity to tell you everything you need to do. So let it be, let it run its course, continue to deep breathe. And that YouTube has a lot of wonderful beginners, YouTube videos for meditation, um, to help you breathe and even breath work videos so even if you don't want to get download the app, YouTube has free breath work videos. There's box breathing. There's all sorts of types of breathing uh, methods. And there's all sorts of meditations as well. If you're beginning, just start with the most basic. Even I don't go into all of the, all of the meditation styles there are at this time. Um, all I do is sit, breathe, let the thoughts exit my mind and eventually I zone out and I'm in a peaceful, quiet state. The more you empty your mind, the more your body heals. A lot of our mental illnesses is based off of the the constant chatter and not being able to hear what our pains and our hurts and regrets that come up surfacing because we repressed it for so long. It's asking to be heard. So by being still, you can listen to it. You can follow a trend and like, oh, okay, I do need to deal with this. And then there's there's gonna be a whole nother video I'll talk to you about how you deal with that. But this allows you to hear what your heart, your body, your soul has been trying to tell you for a long time because your chakras hold that trauma, your body holds that trauma, 
your mind holds that trauma, you are a storage unit that tells a history of everything you've been through. And exercising gets that out, which is why yoga is a beautiful mind and body practice with your meditation, because it's getting all those little areas, your energy systems, your, um, your actual physical muscles active to release all of this stuff as well as your mind. And not only that, it's again showing you what you're capable of. And meditation shows you you're capable of stillness. So when someone's all up in your face, eventually, when someone's in your face and they're, they're toxic and they're angry for no reason or they're agitated for whatever reason or they're angry, you have a stillness in you that you didn't even know that you were capable of because this is what that meditation brought. Eventually, I was off of my anxiety pills. Eventually, I wasn't as triggered with anxiety. There are times when anxiety may come up for me because you haven't yet fully um, attuned your body yet um, to release all the fears that you have. You haven't changed some of those behaviors that trigger the fears, that trigger the anxiety. Um, and that, that takes mastery. That takes time. It took time for that anxiety to even get there. It took time for you to build the behaviors to deal with that anxiety, to deal with those fears, and again, also the negativity. So, but eventually you see all this lesson. And I want to say it could be anywhere from one month to six months that you'll see a difference within your body, within your mannerisms, um, and your state of mind. Now, um, meditation can open you up to a lot of things. Um, I didn't read much on meditation, but you know, you can see colors, you can see images in your meditations at time. And which is very interesting. I'm going to ask that you please understand that, um, this is not to scare you. Um, but this is something I didn't research prior to that. And since no one really shared that with me, I'm going to make sure I share that with you. Um, this is something that you are to remain calm in. It's almost just like your thoughts, but your thoughts are being put to images in your mind because your mind has images. So that's why you think, you know, you have images pop up in your mind. Well, that's, that's your body with whatever images, whatever has to say to you, throwing up both thoughts, you know, these, I don't know, comments in your mind, um, that appear in your own voice. But then also there are images that could pop up. And so it's no different in meditation. So um, if you have questions on that, feel free to let me know. But it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just your mind, everything talking to you. Um, and again, meditation is also a connection to your spirit. So you have dreams that has images. Your meditation will have images. And even in the state of reflection, you just need to understand that there's only going to be so many ways that your soul can speak to you. And that is through images and through your mind, um, through your comments within your own voice. And you can know what is positive and what's negative and sort through that. So uh, that's the one thing I'm going to ask is that you understand that these things can happen. And again, for me, I did not understand. And again, I'm going to be that person that tells you because I wish I would have known. <laughs> and there's books on this. There's all sorts of things that you can read up on and understand. But, you know, if you don't want to even, if you're not ready to deal with that, trust me, believe it's not going to happen immediately. It didn't happen to me either immediately. It happened as I became better at clearing my mind and listening to my body talk to me to tell me what it needs. Um, so that's just something I want to make sure you understand. Now, there are other ways you can meditate. So like I said, you could just sit in a quiet room, nothing on, no music, no TV, no family, just you. You could be outside or in, a, in your room or in the living room, wherever it's just quiet, just you and quiet. And you can just deeply meditate on what's currently going on. You can send a prayer. Once you send a prayer, to meditate is to receive the answer. Um, so prayer is asking. Meditation is receiving. Um, you can meditate by walking, dancing, 
reading, drawing, exercising, gardening, prayer. Um, these are the things that help you quiet your mind, focus your mind, and oh, and in journaling. It'll just uh, anything that allows you to focus on a task. Your brain can only think on one thing at a time. So say for instance, something fearful came up in your mind, hurry up and flip it to something positive. Now that is a challenge in itself and I can attest to that. Um, but that is what you need to do is distract your mind and bring it to something positive so that you can get off that negative fear-based thought that you're having. Um, because again, it can only focus on one thing at a time. Meditation helps train your mind to healthy behavior patterns. And again, once your mind is still, you're still. Once you're still, whatever happens to you, even if it happens suddenly, eventually, not immediately, your mind is such at peace that you won't react versus calmly respond to a situation that happens that in the past would have pushed your button and triggered you into saying or doing something that you would later regret. What I found is whenever you're connecting mind, body, and soul, the more patience that you display, and again, that's through practice of stillness, once you take away all that busyness of technology and bring more nature, silence, reflection into your life, you bring it into yourself, then you're able to mirror that to your family, to your coworkers, to your community, to your children, to your pets. And you'll find ways that you can communicate in loving, compassionate ways. It takes some time, but your PTSD, all these triggers, the bipolar, whatever it is, when you think about people's symptoms, when they talk about it, they talk about um, the mind, the illness of the mind of some way, and it all has to do with the busyness. If you've ever really focused on what people have to do, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, all these things, it's busyness of the mind, a lot of chatter, a lot of things going on. With meditation, with quietness, with, with doing things that, that are healthy through painting and dancing, you will find yourself centered. You find yourself be able to still your mind in a way that whatever busyness in the world, it no longer affects you because you're balanced. You're becoming in harmony with yourself and you'll know if you're out of balance and you'll know, hey, it's time for me to go have my Zen time and go meditate. I need to go, I need to go work in my garden. <laughs> I need to go exercise, whatever that is. But I will also say that um, physical fitness truly is key. Because again, it's mind, body, and soul. You have your meditation for your mind. You have your yoga for, well, your meditation is for your mind and body. Yoga for mind and body. Exercising mind and body because you're able to get your get all the frustration out. You're able to get the trauma worked out of your muscles. You know, if you actually after you practice yoga a little bit more, you'll notice that actually a lot of the exercise positions are actually yoga positions too um, that have been transitioned. So you really actually have been doing yoga in some form or another, maybe just not to that extent. There's also qigong that I do. Um, and there's also another practice taught called Tai Chi. Um, and it all helps center your mind, your body, and um, your energy. So please look into Qigong, um, Q-I-G-O-N-G, or T-A-I-C-H-O-N-G. Um, so just check that stuff out, okay? Or Tai Chi, I'm sorry, T-A-I-C-H-I. Uh, I was still thinking of Qigong. Um... But I do uh, Qigong, especially. Um, there's actually a lot of healing work that, that Qigong provides. It's very healing. Um, it's another form of energetic work. Um, yoga 
and meditation. Those three right there are something that I do practice. And not all the time can I get it in depending on what's happening in life, but those are the three practices I do do. And again, if you only start off with just one minute and work your way up per week, so one minute, then two minutes next week, then five minutes next week, then 10 minutes next week, and just gradually work your way up. It, it doesn't have to be a lot, but to be truthfully honest, this meditation is what helped transition me off of weed and drinking um, because I was no longer dependent on the toxic things. I replaced my boards of toxicity with things that are healthy. Meditation, affirmations, um, the Qigong. Well, actually, I did Tai Chi before I did a Qigong. And then once I found Qigong, I stopped Tai Chi and did Qigong. Um, And Reiki. So I'll get into Reiki a little bit later, uh, energy healing a little bit later. But um, we're out of balance because we're not following the complete cycle of what our body needs each and every single day. Good food, mind relaxation, reflection for our spiritual connection, um, and then our exercising to clear out the energies of the day, that all these things help your mind, your body, and soul. Every single day, you're ingesting all these things and your meditation, your exercising, and um, your health and nutrition, your hydration. All of these things feed you (laughs) throughout the day. And if you're feeding yourself with toxicity daily, then you're just adding to that Versus if you're taking care of the healthy and bringing the healthy in, you're caring for your body. So you have long life, you have good health, and you have a good mind. You have a good energy. And your energy will reflect in good things versus repelling the good things and attracting the negative. You're you're actually attracting in those good things. And you're, you're like, oh my gosh, how did I get so blessed today? It's because you're taking care of yourself on all three levels of your soul, um, your mind, your body and spirit, you know? So I don't want to keep, keep this long, but I, I pray that you do understand that this is a holistic aspect of taking care of yourself every single day. Holistic is you looking at treatment of the whole person. Okay. You're taking into account your mental and social factors, not just the symptoms of the illness, because when you're unbalanced, you create a dis-ease because you're not taking care of yourself. Your body is dis-eased. But if you're taking care of yourself, you're at ease. Your body is a natural healing organism. Your cells, your immunity system, all these things repair overnight. But if you're ingesting toxicity every single day, it's never going to have a chance to 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 take care of itself. It's at war and the toxic cells and all that stuff is winning. And so you're creating a dis-ease. But the minute you start reversing that, eat those healthy foods, drink that water, exercise, clear your mind um, and, and connect your mind, body and soul. Your body is at ease. You're connected. You're whole. You're one. And your body can now repair itself through sleep, through rest, through calm, through stillness. All right, everybody. You have a blessed night. And thank you for tuning in.